The Story of Daedalus and Icarus from Metamorphosis by Ovid. In tedious exile, now too long detained, Daedalus languished for his native land. The sea foreclosed his flight, yet thus he said, Though earth and water in subjection laid, O cruel Minos, thy dominion be, We'll go through air, for sure the air is free. Then to new arts his cunning thought applies, And to improve the work of nature tries. A row of quills in gradual order placed, Rise by degrees in length from first to last. As on a cliff the ascending thicket grows, Or different reeds the rural pipe compose. Along the middle runs a twine of flax, the bottom stems are joined by pliant wax. Thus, well compact, a hollow bending brings the fine composure into real wings. His boy, young Icarus, that near him stood, on thinking of his fate, with smiles pursued the floating feathers, which the moving air bore loosely from the ground and wasted here and there. Or with the wax, impertinently played and with his childish tricks the great design delayed the final master stroke at last imposed and now the neat machine completely closed fitting his pinions on a flight he tries and hung self-balanced in the beaten skies then thus instructs his child my boy, take care to wing your course along the middle air. If low, the surges wet your flagging plumes. If high, the sun the melting wax consumes. Steer between both, nor to the northern skies, nor south Orion turn your giddy eyes. But follow me, let me before you lay rules for the flight and mark the pathless way. Then teaching with a fond concern his son, he took the untried wings and fixed them on, but fixed with trembling hands. And as he speaks, the tears rolled gently down his aged cheeks, then kissed and in his arms embraced him fast, but knew not this embrace must be the last. And mounting upward as he wings his flight, back on his charge, he turns his aching sight as parent birds, when first their callow care, leave the high nest to tempt the liquid air, then cheers him on and oft with fatal art, reminds the stripling to perform his part. These, as the angler at the silent brook, or mountain shepherd leaning on his crook, or gaping plowman from the vale descries, they stare and view him with religious eyes and straight conclude him gods, since none but they through their own azure skies could find a way. Now Delos, Paros on the left are seen, and Samos, favored by Jove's haughty queen, upon the right, the isle Lebnathos named, and fair Kalim for its honey famed. When now the boy whose childish thoughts aspire to loftier aims and make him ramble higher, grown wild and wanton, more emboldened flies, far from his guide and soars among the skies. The softening wax that felt a nearer sun dissolved apace and soon began to run. The youth in his vein, his melting pinions shakes, his feathers gone, no longer air he takes. Oh, father, father, as he strove to cry, down to the sea he tumbled from on high and found his fate, yet still subsists by fame among those waters that retain his name. The father, now no more a father cries. Ho, oh, Icarus, where are you? As he flies. Where shall I seek my boy? He cries again and saw his feathers scattered on the main, then cursed his art and funeral rites conferred, naming the country from the youth interred.